What's going on ladies and gentlemen, I'm Bean Machine from Bean Machine Does Games and today we are going to take a look at Call of Duty World War 2. This is my special tutorial on doing the Call of Duty World War 2 multiplayer, specifically the local play with bots and in this video I'm going to do a war mode at the Omaha Beach of D-Day. So. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you leave a like, subscribe, drop a comment, and make sure you are clicking that notification bell to get notified every time we post something new. Without further ado, let's get right into the video. So, the first thing that we need to cover is choosing your mode. So, your mode has to be able to fit you. So are you a casual gamer? Are you a competitive gamer? Well, if you're a casual gamer, you want to go to the standard modes category. The standard modes category includes team deathmatch, war, domination, hardpoint, any of these in case you want to try them out. The most casual would be team deathmatch or free for all, or even maybe some capture the flag here and there. If you're a hardcore gamer, the four main is search and destroy, capture the flag, Hardpoint and Gridiron. Now, these modes can vary in different versions of competitiveness, but most of the other th modes you'll find in the standard modes category are going to be for casual gamers, like Team Deathmatch, Free For All, anything like that. But Hardpoint, Capture the Flag, Search and Destroy, Gridiron, these are all more competitive modes made for competitiveness. One of the very good modes here is War, which is a series of objectives that you have to do in a certain map, like clearing a certain area or setting a bomb somewhere to destroy something. And actually, that's what I'm going to pick today. You guys can pick whatever mode you want, but that's what we're going to start with in my multiplayer game. Now, the next thing you need is to choose your map. So, specifically with the war mode, the war mode has exclusive maps. You can always do war modes in standard maps like the Gustav Cannon or the Flag Tower, but war, the war mode, actually has its own exclusive missions. So if you go here to war missions, you have Operation Breakout, which is a battle across a French village with intense combat objectives trying to do different things there's operation griffin where you have to if you're on the allied side you have to defend a bridge um so the axis powers can't cross it before you blow it up um or if you're on the axis it's the other way around you're trying to cross the bridge before the allies blow it up and then there's operation neptune which is a little weird but, I mean, since this was actually called Operation Overlord, Omaha Beach, D-Day, basically. Uh, so, you are either invading as the Allies, or you're defending as the Axis powers. If you're on the Allies side, you have to clear the bunkers, destroy things, destroy communications, all the stuff you would do on a D-Day map. If you're on the Axis, of course, you gotta shoot the Allied powers down to make them not get up the beaches. I scratch my ear here. My ears very itchy. So for this particular tutorial, I'm going to be choosing Operation Neptune because I, myself, love D-Day as a concept. So I'm going to go with Operation Neptune. Now the next thing you have to do, game rules, you can do whatever you want with this, but usually they'll be preset to a pretty standard FPS multiplayer thing. Then there's the bots. So there's different things you can do, so if you're on your side, so your side will have a bot count of say 7, and then you can drive these up to however many bots you want to have. They don't really even out, so what I would do is since there's 5 bots on the friendly team, and you, that's, that's your team, you should have 6 bots on the enemy team because you're going to have 5 bots and yourself. So that's what I have, so it's a nice 12... 6v6, 12 people, 12 competitors, 
against each other and then you can set the difficulty of course if you want more of a challenge you can set the enemy difficulty to hardened or veteran but i would usually stick with regular regular uh, because it will give you uh, an opportunity to learn the mechanics of the game just in case you don't really know how in this particular game works uh so now that we got that all the way out of the way we've got codcaster it's just your settings and uh how you're gonna do things you're pretty much good to go for the game mode setup now we're gonna move on to your lobby setup so before you enter the lobby it will give you an opportunity to start a match with another person this is on local play mode and i'm just a uh, team deathmatch bots map well you know war i am alone and I am just going to do it with bots. And then you got auto assign, which is your teams. You can auto assign your teams. You can set it to auto assign, or you can choose which team you specifically want to be on. If you press the right bumper once, it'll go to your soldier. So you have different divisions. Uh, so these will be your custom divisions. And then you have your score streaks. You can set them to have different things. So let's see if I get, let's say if I get 500, Score streak points, I can spawn a recon aircraft, or I can switch it to any of these. So I can have some paratroopers come in, I can have some flat guns come in, I can have some an emergency airdrop, uh, a ball turret gunner come down, and we could have a fire bombing run, anything like that. Ar artillery, even, mortars. There's a lot of different things uh, that you can choose, but these are the standard. These will always be here, so you've got recon glide bomb and artillery barrage now we're going to go to the next section of this tutorial which is putting together a division now your division is going to be your custom loadout so if you press the x button on your first division slot uh, you can select your division preset so if you choose the infantry you get all those perks that you see here so you've got a fourth primary weapon attachment a second secondary weapon attachment um, and also while aiming down sights you have less idle sway and you can move faster while aiming airborne armored mountain expeditionary resistance cavalry uh, commando they all have their own perks but for this build I'm just gonna stick with infantry for right now so for this build I want this to be a sniper class so I am going to give it a K98K, and I'm going to put some attachments on here. Full metal jacket attachment, extended mag so I can have ballistic calibration. Game Machine from the future just dropping in to tell you that you can do whatever you want. This is just the way I like to do it, so. And I can change the camo of it. So let's give it a nice dark camo right here, the oak leaf camo. And then weapon charms, you can have, you can add different charms to your weapon. Otherwise, on the scope, there's just a little charm dangly thing that sits there all right and then the our secondary weapon i want it to be something that's going to have a faster fire rate but not exactly as an smg so maybe like a maybe like a, a let's go with a 1911 and then we can add an extended mag to give it more um, firepower and then we'll add a high caliber round so it ups my damage to the max then we've got our grenades so we got our lethal grenades so we've got the pineapple grenade standard um, we got this it's like a sticky bomb we got an s mine we got a satchel charge and a throwing knife I'm gonna go with the pineapple grenade and then we got our tactical grenades so We've got this concussion grenade, the British N N69. Uh, very nice, very nice, but this American uh, white smoke grenade should do fine for what we're going to be doing. And since I'm not using a uh, rifle or SMG or shotgun for my secondary, I'm actually going to change this to a different basic training. So I'm actually going to choose the espionage because it um, if you shoot an enemy it puts them on the minimap which is nice so yeah 
and then we can take it to the firing range. Only the player one can do this, so if you're playing with another person, they can't go to the firing range. You can touch the touchpad to go to the firing range and test your stuff. So let's test our little uh, K98K here. We're gonna aim for that target. So if I hold down the right stick, it'll take me into sniper focus mode, sharpshooter focus. And we'll let it recharge. And we'll shoot the target. Right there, almost a bullseye. Then we'll shoot this other target. Very nice. Then we'll try a little closer range. Bullseye. So yeah, there's our K98K, and then we've got our uh, we got our 1911. There we go. All right, and then we can test out our grenade. So there's our pineapple. Let's go back, and then we will go to our next segment, which goes us, lets us go into the actual match. So here we go. Okay, so we are now in the game. So we can choose um, our loadouts if we want so we can have our custom divisions or there's a bunch of standard issue divisions uh, that are already preset for us um so we made our custom divisions so i'm not going to spend too much here but there are a lot of different divisions we can choose this is it soldiers the allied invasion begins with us our mission right. is to secure the beach take out 255 millimeter artillery guns all right, so we are now in the game. So we are storming the beach right now. Now, since I'm a sniper, I want to get down low, and I want to try and sniff out some dudes in case they're over here. Looks like we're clear, so we're going to go ahead and run over here. And we've got this we can take out. All right, now he's going to set an explosive right here, and that's going to blow up this wall to get us inside and we got it all right bunkers down we're gonna move to the next all right objective is complete advance to the radio room if we go if we go from up here Drop down, drop a grenade down this hatch. Got him. Oh crap. Oh man, he got me. Always make sure that you are clear of enemies before reloading. So you see how that enemy didn't see me? It's because he, I was behind him, so I had very good openings to reload. And that guy didn't see me either, so it gave me a very good open shot. Now after we destroy this, we've completed our objective. So now it's time to advance to the artillery gun. We have to make sure we're guarding all sides of this so that people do not come in and ruin our plans. There we are. And we have just won. Yeah! So now we have moved on to the next stage, which is halftime. So halftime is the time where you will be given this nice cinematic cutscene where we're pushing back the Nazis and saving uh, France. Well, halftime... It will, you will be given your score, your game summary, and then you will be pushed onto the other team. I am not going to show much more about this side, otherwise this video would be way longer than it is. So without further ado, let's move on to the conclusion. Well guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial on Call of Duty World War II and how to have a fun and relaxing COD World War II multiplayer match. Now whether you do this with any other modes like team deathmatch, free for all, or capture the flag, or even with a friend, you will always know 
what tactics to use, how you should set up your game, and how to create a loadout. I also want to thank Share Factory Studio, their amazing software for editing videos on a PlayStation 5. I don't even need a computer to do this. This was all edited using Share Factory Studio, and it's not bad. So, I'd like you to support them. If you have a PlayStation and you want to make if you want to start making content, make sure you download Share Factory Studio. This is not a sponsor. Hashtag not spawn, but I love this software. You should download it because it's very good. So, without further ado, make sure you are leaving a like, subscribing, dropping a comment, and clicking that notification bell if you want to stay up to date with all the content that we post on this channel. I will see you all later. This is Bean Machine from Bean Machine Does Games, signing off.